Hello and welcome to the second part of the Windows Update for Business Overview video series. This is module 4.3, Windows Update for Business Advanced Topics. In this module, we will take a closer look at the Windows Update for Business client and how to configure it via Microsoft Intune. While in the previous module we looked at the update settings, the focus now will be on the user experience settings that we can configure in a Windows Update ring. These policies control the behavior of the Windows Update client once the updates are offered to the device. Let's begin by looking at the Windows Update workflow, which has four core areas of functionality or phases. It all starts with the scan phase. Devices regularly scan the Windows Update services to determine which new updates are applicable to them. If the clients determine that new updates are applicable, then the download phase may begin. These updates may be downloaded in multiple sequential phases. It all depends on how big the updates are and how actively used are these devices. Once the updates are downloaded and cached on the devices, the install phase will begin. Once the updates are installed, then the device may require a restart for these updates to become in effect. All of these four phases can be controlled using the Windows Update Ring policies. Now let's look at each individual phase, starting with the scan phase. I mentioned that devices regularly scan the Windows Update services to see if new updates are applicable. Well, there's a default interval, which is 22 hours. We also have power status dependencies, and we have power status dependencies for all four phases. By default, if a device is running on battery, it can scan, download, and install updates only if the battery is at least 40%. Moving to the download phase, downloading and distributing updates can consume quite a bit of network resources, so optimizing network bandwidth consumption for these updates should be taken into account when designing and implementing a Windows Update for Business strategy. Delivery optimization is a Windows built-in distributed solution that allows us to reduce the impact of download bandwidth for Microsoft content. And being a self-organizing distributed cache, delivery optimization allows clients not to download solely from the Windows Update sources, but also from additional sources, for example, from peers on the same network. And to complement this distributed solution, Microsoft Connected Cache is a dedicated server-based solution that transparently downloads and cache content delivered through delivery optimization. This caching server can be placed on premises and at the time of this recording can be enabled on configuration manager distribution points only. Delivery optimization is enabled by default, but it may not meet your needs with the default values. For example, Windows clients will not upload data to their peers if they're running on battery, or they will only share the content that has a minimum size of 100 megs, so you may want to review those default settings. Those settings can be modified using policies via Microsoft Intune. As part of this video series, we're not covering the configuration of delivery optimization, but make sure to review the links provided at the end of the video series for more details. Let's now look at the install phase. The more the devices are in use and active and connected to the internet, higher are the chances for devices to scan, download, and ultimately install updates. Devices may also have other physical circumstances that prevent the installation of updates. I already mentioned before the dependency that we have on battery level, for which if a device is running on battery, the installation phase will not begin unless the device has at least 40% on battery. And uh, of course, if a device is uh, shut down, for example, the device will not turn on by itself to install updates. Let's now look uh, at uh, the first policy in uh, the user experience settings in the Windows Update ring. This is called automatic update behavior. With this policy, you can define when and if to require end user interaction during an update process. And with this setting, we have six different options. The first option is to notify for download, but this option may impact the velocity or convergence time since the update will not begin until the end user takes an action to initiate the download or once the deadlines are reached. 
The second option is to auto-install at maintenance time. The device in this case will attempt to install the updates when the device is not in use. The user will then be notified when to schedule a restart. In this option, as you can see in the screenshot, we have the possibility to specify active hours, which are effectively a way to indicate when the device is in use by the end users and should not be rebooted. The third option is to auto-install and restart at maintenance time. The device will attempt to install and restart when not in use, and if needed, it will also automatically restart. The fourth option is to auto-install and restart at a scheduled time. With this policy, we can specify a week, a day, and a time when the update should occur. But note that if the client cannot install uh, during this scheduled time, for example, you may have battery dependencies or simply the device is turned off, then we will have to wait until the next scheduled time, potentially impacting significantly on the velocity. Auto install and restart without end user control is the fifth option. This option is very similar to auto install and restart at maintenance time. Updates will be installed when the device is not in use and reboots will happen outside of the default active hours, which is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. But also we have a unique behavior when using conjunction with the restart checks, which I will explain later. Reset to default is uh, the same as auto install at maintenance time, but it allows the users to set their own active hours. If the user does not specify their own active hours, intelligent active hours will kick in. I mentioned different time the term active hours. So to explain a little better active hours, let's move to the restart phase. Active hours identifies a period of time during which the device is considered being active or in use, Therefore, Windows will not allow any reboots due to Windows updates during that time frame. And when you specify active hours, you can specify two values, an active hours start and an active hours end. Windows 10 19.03 introduced also this new concept of intelligent active hours. So instead of you setting a policy that says all the devices active hours is 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., let's set the intelligence within Windows so that based on heuristic and observed end user behavior, the device can find the best time to schedule a restart when the device is not in use. Also for the restart phase, we have power status dependencies. By default, the client cannot reboot if it's running on battery. There are two exceptions to that rule. If a user initiates a reboot, the reboot can occur only if the device has at least 40% of battery. Otherwise, the end user will be notified to plug the device to a power source. The other exception is if you have selected restart checks. So let's explain a little bit more about restart checks. Restart checks is a policy that is really designed for devices housed in charging cards that provide inconsistent AC power throughout the night. So when we enable uh, this policy, uh, setting restart checks to skip, Windows will allow the device to reboot due to Windows updates, as long as the device has at least 40% of battery. Now with the restart checks set to skip, the device will also ignore if uh, the system is uh, active, maybe a user is using the device or is uh, projecting. So be careful when using this policy, especially for one-to-one -one devices. Another interesting behavior that we have with the restart checks is that uh, the scan, download, and install operations are all postponed outside of active hours. And if you don't specify active hours, we will use the default 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We have an additional interesting behavior when restart checks is used in conjunction with the auto install and reboot without end user control. In this case, all the end user's notifications will be suppressed. Since we're talking about the restart phase, we also have to talk about deadline settings. A deadline is a number of days before a device is forced to restart to ensure that the updates are successfully installed. And you can specify deadlines for both quality and feature updates. Deadlines work in conjunction with pause and deferral settings. For example, if you set a quality update deferral of seven days, like in this example, and a deadline of three days, Users will not get offered the quality update until day seven from the published date, and the deadline will not force a restart until day 10. 
These Windows components adopt their behavioral heuristic based on these deadlines in order to attempt to meet the stated deadline. Let's now talk about a grace period. To ensure a good user experience for devices that have been turned off for some time, with the grace period we can extend the deadlines, avoiding an immediate restart due to an update. With the grace period, we can specify an amount of days. In this example, we have uh, a value of two. And uh, this uh, value is especially useful in cases where a user has been away for many days. Think about a user that was on vacation, so that the device will not be forced to immediately update as soon as the user comes back from vacation. So in the example that we made before, the device met the deadline on day 10, but it was uh, turned off until uh, day 18. On day 19, the device should receive the update immediately, but since we have a grace period, the device would be forced to reboot after two days. One thing to note is that once the deadlines and grace periods have passed, updates will be applied automatically and the restarts will occur regardless of active hours. The last option that we have here is called Auto Reboot. When you set this uh, setting to no, devices will not automatically restart outside of the active hours until the deadline is reached, even if any applicable updates are already installed and pending a restart. When you set this option to yes, if the device has installed the required updates and is outside of active hours, it may attempt an automatic restart before the deadline. This is the end of module 4.3, Windows Update for Business Advanced Topics. In the next module, we will look at the recommendations for both one-to-one -one and shared devices in education environments.